All right, guys, today I'm going to share with you my first impressions of this 7x14 lathe that I picked up on eBay. This is one of those Chinese lathes that um, Harbor Freight makes and everybody else just branded on the different labels. Um, what's different about this one than the Harbor Freight one is that it's a 14, and I think the largest one Harbor Freight makes is um, 12. And I really was thinking about getting one from Harbor Freight, but the prices went up a lot. And um, I found this on eBay, and this costs about $450 with free shipping and then tax. So it came in under about um, $500. And then the other thing I just want to kind of show you here is in this box there, I have a nice starter kit from Little Machine Shop for, um, that was another $225 plus I think $18 shipping. I think it came in at $243. Um, and in there has got the quick... Um, change tool post it's got the chuck for the tailstock as well as some tools so I'll take you through that and give you my first impressions of what it was like getting this up and running so there's a lot of videos on what you have to do when you get one of these the reassembly the assembly so I, I didn't record or, or videotape any of that but I will tell you it does come completely covered in like a grease or a um, some sort of coating, which is a heavyweight oil to keep it from rusting as it gets shipped from overseas. And in that oil is like a sandy, gritty texture. So every single piece of this needs to come apart. And when you do that, um, well, first it's worth mentioning, it's great to get a set of T-handles. I actually ordered a set of Bontas made in the USA ones to do the project, but I accidentally bought SAE, even though I'm knowing that I needed metric. Um, and I was able to get these at Harbor Freight and I was actually 30% off that day. So these were literally like $4 and change. And they did the trick. And in some ways I, I thought they were pretty good because they're not the stoutest. So when you're on a smaller uh, type of boat, bolt or head, you could feel it kind of, you won't over tighten it for sure with these. And it did the trick and uh, I'm gonna still order the USA Bond House. I just gotta switch out those SAEs for the metric. But the other thing I'll tell you, as you take this apart, you know, you take the tool post off, you take the tail stock apart, every single nook and cranny needs to come out what i did was i would put each um in a separate container so the headstock as that came apart went in one container the tail stock the slide the everything i did the compound that way i knew what screw and bolt when it went back it was kind of easy to figure it out but you took it took forever to clean just tons of wd-40 rag after rag to get it to this point um, but you know, I've seen a lot of things where these come broken, there's different parts broken. I did not have too much of that. At this point, there's nothing I could tell that was really majorly broken. The plastic in this cover was broken. I was able to crazy glue it back on. Nothing critical. Um, I did have to re-thread some screw holes and re-thread uh, some of the, the cap head screws. Um, but they, you just got every screw. I mean, you got to soak the cap heads. They're just grime and grime and grime. I can't explain that enough. Um, but I did yet yeah, did have to shim in here with um, some washers. This was not working well. Um, the cross slide here, you know, it takes a long time. I probably had about 30 hours in it from start to finish in taking apart and putting it back together. Um, you want to get everything really the compound here is a little stiff. I could adjust it. From what I understand, you want that to be really stiff. Everything is rock solid at this point. Uh, and it's ready to pretty much get the upgrades from Little Machine Shop. I did do one upgrade. Um, on the back here, I bought this plastic cover to protect the chips and stuff from getting in there. Um, you can see it in the picture here. That cost me about $10 on eBay. Had a drill um, and tap some screws in there and they just used some little screws that you would get from like um i think those are from electrical outlet or something they were just really small and i was able to thread those in there the only thing i do not have back together yet is the gears um, that's to run the lead screw for the power feed um, i want to play with that a little bit more i want to I, I disassembled all that when i took the lead screw out I do have to get that all adjusted and, and working well. That'll be the next part of the project. But I don't plan on doing anything with the power feed yet. So I want to dig into this little machine shop goodie bag. 
So this here was not from Little Machine Shop. I got this from eBay and this is a live center. And I think I paid about $20 for this and it got pretty good reviews. It is definitely pretty heavy duty. And this goes into the tailstock when you wanna spin something. It only comes with the, the dead center. So definitely will need a live center. And that live center is really for those longer projects. Now in here came the chuck that goes into the tailstock. And this is supposed to be a little bit smaller size. It's a little shorter here um, for the mini lathe. So you have a little bit more room to work. And like I said, you could probably find this stuff cheaper if you wanted to buy it all individually. With the amount of time I had into this project, I was willing to spend the 225 bucks, get exactly what I need. Um, Cause I don't know a lot about this. It's my first time getting into this hobby with the mini lathe. So here is the five indexing cutting tools. And that's what those look like. They are three eighths um, triangular. And you can see I'll run, I'll try those out here in the near future. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the, just the box for the chuck. So it is a, it is just a Jacobs basically half inch chuck. And this is some boring bars. 3 8 a nine piece set to make those holes bigger inside uh, wherever it is that you're gonna bore out. Let's take a look at those. And they come in a nice little box here. Looks like they're probably decent quality. I'm assuming most of the stuff is just average quality, but it's a great starter sit, set to get you going. Not knowing, like I said, exactly what you need. This is a perfect set to get you going. These are the center drills. These are great when you're starting to drill something. You put this into the chuck and before you drill it or before you put the live center into it or the dead center, it kind of gives you that nice starter hole. Um, that's just the chuck key. And then here is what really adds the value to this. This is the quick change cutting tool post. And this is the, really what I wanted. And you could find these somewhat cheaper, or at least you could buy them individually. I think for about a buck and a quarter, the same one on Amazon. Uh, but I wanted to get everything together, so I just had it and knew it, it would work. And this is supposed to make your life really easy when using the lathes, because you don't have to do all the adjustments. So let me get this set up and take a look at some of these things on the lathe. And I forgot to show you this here. It's a cutoff blade for cutting off. And this was the actual arbor case, the short stubby arbor that you saw in the chuck. I wanna show you here what I am very happy about is that this dead center lines up dead on with the chuck. And that to me is gonna make my life real easy that I don't have to adjust that out of the box. And as you can see here, here's the original tool post I have yet to even use it because the tools have to go in there. You have to shim them up, down to get them uh, dead center. So I'm going to replace that now with the little machine shop version of the quick change. All right. Is that nifty or what? That's what the tool post looks like. Super easy to adjust. I put the dead stock in here, uh, lined up the tip so it's dead on with that. All I had to do to adjust it was use this little lever here once I put the actual um, bit in here and it locked it right in made it so easy um, taking a look at a couple of the components here that come with it as you can see here it came with several of these OXA ones that's what I have in the tool post now so two of those I'm not sure what the difference of this OXA dash two is I'll have to read what that is. It looks identical to this one. I, I can't see what the difference is on it. I'm wondering if they just labeled it something different. I don't know. This obviously is for holding something round, maybe like a boring bar or different type of tooling that's round. And then this holds the cutoff blade. So now let's chuck up some material in here and try to make some chips. And here I am with my new tool post. And like I mentioned, really easy to install. And Scoutcraft had told me, Tom, you're gonna love the lathe. It'll be fun projects, but get yourself some PVC pipe to practice on. And that's what I have in here. It's just some scraps, getting used to using the cross slide, getting used to using the compound. There I'm practicing facing. 
Um, and then you can see here, I start to take a little bit off the diameter. And as you can see here, it's just making quick work of the PVC. So next up, I wanted to try some aluminum. So I chucked up some round stock here, as you can see. And the first thing I'm doing here is just facing it off. I think I did a pretty good job with facing it for my first time at it as I had it centered. Took a couple of passes at it there, as you can see. Then after I faced it, I just put the bit on a little bit of an angle and I just chamfered the edge just to practice a little chamfering as you can see there. Then I transitioned over to drilling and on here I'm giving the center drill a shot for the first time. And like I showed you before I felt like it was pretty much centered. I got a lot to learn here as well. I probably could have chucked it a little closer um, and whatnot, but just really wanted to see how the tools were working from Little Machine Shop. The chuck on there is from Little Machine Shop as part of the kit. Then after the center hole was drilled out, I put a drill bit in there. I do need to get myself some stubby drill bits, but that is actually a pretty high quality drill bit in there. It looks a little rusty, but it is sharp as can be. And I just put a couple of passes on it, getting used to it. And as you can see here, it's making some pretty nice chips in the aluminum, as it should. And I got a lot to learn about how fast to go and the speeds and everything. I think I'm running about 1200 RPMs there. And here I am, my first couple of passes here. As I make more videos in the future, I'll be sure to um, get better camera angles and position it better. Yeah, it's a little tricky to videotape, so I had to zoom in. So it's not the perfect resolution, but I think you could kind of get the point on how the machine's working. And that's kind of the purpose of this video is really just to share my first impressions of the machine since I've got it, in case anybody was on the fence, as well as the upgrades from Little Machine Shop as well as eBay. And here I position the tool where I'm just gonna cut some grooves into the work to kind of get a feel for that. And then um, just finishing it off again with a little more chamfering. This is gonna be a fun tool for many years to come. Final impression is I really like it, but I have a lot to learn. I really like the distance there on the tailstock. So I'm really glad I went with the 14 inch versus the 10 or 12 from Harbor Freight. It allows you to use the longer drill bits as well as longer pieces of work. I will say, just know what you're getting. This is a $500 machine, not a $2,500 machine. It's gonna require some labor of love, taking it apart, putting it back together. But that's, hey, I love that part of it. That's part of the hobby. I learned the machine inside and out. It's just like restoring an old tool and bringing it back to life. So I don't mind that, some people may. As far as the machining toolkit or all the tooling from Little machine shop, very happy with it. The fit and finish on all of the tools is great. Like I said, maybe not the highest of qualities, but definitely good enough to get me started. The tool post itself is very high quality. I can assure you of that. It is, the fit and finish on it is just really amazing as you can see here and in the pieces. I know I mentioned earlier around the OXA1 and the OXA2 what the differences are. The OXA2 has a little bit of a groove in it here and it could be used for flat as well as round pieces in there that it could hold as you can see there. So that's the differences there. Obviously didn't use everything here um, that's in the kit, but I will in future videos. I also did not share with you the live center I got from eBay. So I will share that with you in the future as I start to use that on longer pieces or different pieces where I need a live center. And there ultimately is the little piece of aluminum that I worked on. That's the first little project. You can see I cut some grooves in it, cut a hole in the top. So overall, very happy with everything I purchased. 
if you'd like a Tom gun made in the USA tool sticker, just shoot me an email at tomguntools at gmail.com. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, the world has enough guys, so be a man. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it.